Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Edison, New Jersey, written by Juno Diaz. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, in this work by Juno Diaz, we are following this narrator. This narrator is pretty much telling us about his love life. Um, his life um, as he's working or his occupation um, and pretty much the way he sees the world and all the things that he has to encounter on a daily basis. Um, so our narrator within this work by Juno Diaz, we know that he's from the Dominican Republic. Uh, we know that um, he lives in New Jersey and that he works for this company that uh, pretty much sell uh, card tables, pool tables, and kind of game accessories, and um, you know, just in the mindset of like kind of like card tables, pool tables, and things that you need to play those games, and that's all. That's what the company does. That's what it's all about. And um, our narrator and his partner by the name of Wayne, they pretty much on a daily basis um, go to different cities and towns. Uh, within New Jersey and deliver these tables and deliver uh, the orders that, that, that people make. So uh, in this work, what we encounter is that our narrator and Wayne, they pretty much um, have to deliver, deliver this crown, this tape, this pool table. Uh, and the, the thing is that every time they go to the house, nobody opens the door there's this um, a black young girl in there that's the, the maid of the house and she doesn't open the door when they come the first time and then the second time they see her but she still doesn't open the door um, and Wayne and, and, and the narrator they do get in trouble by their boss because of this but later they, they kind of um, the, the owner or the person who ordered the table um, he kind of like calmed down a little bit and they do end up delivering the pool table uh, to the house and the young black girl ends up letting him letting them in to set up the pool table now the thing to keep in mind here is that our narrator and Wayne uh, our narrator is from the Dominican Republic and he's working in America uh, and he, he's telling us a lot about his trade and what he has to what he's going through on a daily basis and racism and prejudice and all the things that he has to face uh, because of the fact that you know he's he's from a, a poorer side of his community, or I guess within a, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is he doesn't make a lot of money. He doesn't come from money. Uh, he comes from a household that you know that struggled growing up. So you can see that by the way he talks and the way he behaves, that he's not used to rich neighborhoods and he didn't grow up in a rich neighborhood. And that's kind of like one of the, the themes, and well, not theme, but one of the um, common problem that we see go throughout this, um, this collection of short stories by Juno Diaz, the Drowned Short Story Collection. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the characters are facing poverty and facing uh, all, of the things that, all of the things that come along with poverty. Um, and so our narrator... Um, he tells us that, you know, he doesn't just take pre um, prejudice and, and racism lying down because when he gets customers that think that they're going to steal or think that they're going to do something bad, uh, he tells us, he kind of like tells this kind of like silly joke and say, well, where did you bury your treasure so I know where it is while you're stepping out? Or when he comes to set up a pool table or when he goes to somebody else to deliver a package, they usually kind of like lay newspaper on the floor so that uh, the delivery man don't get their house dirty. And he usually makes them take it um, to, to, you know, pick it up and say, what if we sleep? What if we fall? What if something happens to us? Uh, because we're carrying heavy equipment. So um, there's a lot going on within the short story because one of the things is that it's kind of like making us look at the way in which, I mean, people usually look at delivery men and look at people who work in... Uh, heavy labor, labor jobs. When they when these delivery men go into rich neighborhoods or rich communities, uh, the people that are delivering the things to they usually have these ideas about them stealing or taking their stuff or uh, just being horrible, 
bad people and and that's just that's kind of horrible to just look at everyone who's not as rich or wealthy as you as that um so the narrator he, he deals with this well the way that he deals with this or, or challenges this is by uh taking a dump and, and trying to clog their bathrooms i don't know how that makes his life better but that's that's what he does um he does a lot of questionable things, a lot of bad things within this world. For one thing, our narrator steals from his boss. He steals from the cash register when no one's looking. He takes dumps in people's houses to get back at them and, you know, shake his fist at them. Um, he does a lot of things that, you know, that they're just uncalled for. And um, within this work, uh, the young black woman that... that he sees within this this man's house, this housekeeper. He he tries to you know I guess build a relationship with her, move towards her in a lustful manner, um, and it, it kind of seems to me like she's more interested in her boss and and maybe a romantic relationship towards her boss rather than than the narrator because the narrator drives the the this this Dominican black woman home um, and. He puts his hand on her lap and she doesn't, you know, respond to this because and he understands that he's not going to get anything from her in, in a sexual way. So he's he makes some move, he makes an advance and he gets shut down. And the thing is, like, it kind of hurts him because this is a, a black woman who is Dominican, who is um, part of his culture, but she's denying him, even though that they're from the the same culture and she's kind of like seeking after someone who's white so that that kind of hurts him and um he's also recovering from a relationship uh where you know it still hurts him he's still processing it um and, and i guess that's something that's common with men men usually have a hard time dealing with breakups and dealing with um you know the end of a relationship so the story goes on. Um, nothing happens between this uh, this woman, this housekeeper, uh, and the narrator. Uh, Wayne is an interesting character. The, the the narrator's partner in delivering things. Wayne is married, but he's also treating women like they're, they're it's a game. Like he is treating women like it's a conquest. Even though he's married, even though he has a, a family, he's still going after other women or people at work or women that he finds attractive because for, for you know for him being with women is not just finding someone you're you're happy with or someone that makes you happy for him it's more about the conquest and i guess um you know we know how horrible that is but i feel like american society that's what it, it breeds a lot of men to do um in the american society i think that uh, when you look at um, American society, okay, from my perspective, American society breeds men to treat women like a conquest. How many women can you get? How many women can you sleep with? How many women can you um, successfully go after? Um, and a lot of, and, and this is kind of like reinforced through through a lot of things, through um, um, through high school, through sports, through through. TV shows and movies, you always see that in, in a guy setting or whenever guys are together, it's always about uh, how many notches can you get on your belt, how many numbers can you get. It's all about the number gain. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how you feel towards your person, if you want to be with the person. There's this kind of like push towards it's a conquest. How many women can you conquer? Um, and we see how uh, Wayne within this work, he, he's all about that. Even though he's married, he doesn't care. It's all about the game for him, the, the seduction, uh, the chase, uh, the acceptance, and then sleeping with someone or multiple individuals to the point where you can prove to other men that you're masculine, that you're, you're, you're tough, or you, you just, I guess you're an, you're an, an ultimate man. It's kind of like, I guess it even fits into this, the, the Batman ideal that I'm kind of thinking about here is that, um, you know, we know that Batman is a, is a human being and we know that Batman is, is a human, but in certain points he kind of looks invincible that he can defeat any villain and he can pretty much stop 
anything. Like, I mean, if somebody told you that Batman was going to stop a nuclear explosion, I mean, you might, you're not going to say, well, it's impossible because it's Batman. Batman is so clever that he's probably going to come up with some type of, of thing to stop, uh, you know, a, a, a crisis because Batman never fails. I mean, that's, that's the thing when it comes to superheroes. Superheroes don't fail because that's a whole. That's that's what being a superhero is ultimately, and it's the same thing with Men in Conquest, especially within this work in Wayne. Because Wayne is it's not about happiness. It's not about selling down. It's about can I pursue? Can I chase a woman? And can I get her? Uh, and and the thing is, like we see this this thing playing out between our narrator and Wayne. Because when they're when they're in these like two, three, four hour car rides together, they're talking about women, they're talking about their individual conquests, and we see Wayne, um, we see our narrator lying, lying to Wayne because he, the, our narrator ends up saying to Wayne that he slept with the the um, the young black woman, the the um, the housekeeper, and he didn't because she rejected him. So it's kind of like this bolster of of bravado and masculinity and that I can get whatever girl I want and, and I'm all about the chase and the conquest and a lot of guys use this to kind of like tell other guys how sometimes even you know I'm better than you because I can you know chase this m amount of women uh, and so you see that within the work you also see um, the level of you know the two different types, I guess, of, of men that appear within Juno Diaz's work. There's the group of men who go after women without a care that they'll sleep with them, they'll be with them, and then they'll they'll disappear. And then there's the other type where uh, the other type of man where they will find a woman, create a relationship, and then if it breaks, if they break up, that relationship will kind of really hurt the guy and you know he'll have to go through a period of heartbreak and woe is me kind of thing um so the 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 short story this short story pretty much, edison new jersey pretty much ends up with the narrator telling wayne that he, he slept with the girl when he didn't and he ends up becoming a creep because he keeps on calling her um the house where the woman works with the housekeeper works uh, and and not saying a word, but in his mind, he's like, well, she definitely wants me when she wants nothing to do with him. She just, ultimately, she just wanted a ride from the dude, and he, in his mind, thinking that, you know, she she wants me, or something like that. Um, and the story pretty much ends up with them picking their next, the, what they're going to do next day, um, and what neighborhoods they're going to be in the next day. Um, so, I mean... Within this work, we see um, um, racism and prejudice because we know that the narrator, when he goes into rich neighborhoods, they, they, he knows that they're going to look down upon him. And we, when he goes to poor neighborhoods, he knows what kind of things na different neighborhoods order because depending on how much money you have, it depends on what kind of um, entertainment you can buy. Because if you're poor, you're not going to be able to afford a, a, a pool table and you're probably not even going to have space to put a pool table wherever you live. Um, that's more for the rich. And if, you know, when you're poor, you're probably going to go lower for cheaper things and probably think, you know, things you're going to afford basically. Um, so we see the narrator judging the society that he lives in, judging the different types of people and how these people look at him and how he looks at them. And also looking at relationships and how some men are all about conquest and, you know, how many women can you get on your tally sheet and others uh, in another man, um, just like our narrator within Edison, New Jersey, that's all about, well, if I get with someone, I create a relationship with them and it doesn't work out. Well, that's going to pretty much damage who I am as an individual. And it's going to it's going to hurt me and impact me in terms of like deeper meaning, uh, um, an, an analysis here. Um, I mean, we, we see the characters and the different ideals going on. Our narrator is not a great person. He's stealing from his boss. He's he has these views of women. Um, he you know he's lying. He steals for his girlfriend and like takes his girlfriend. Uh, well, well, when he has a girlfriend, he steals from his the register at his job to take his girlfriend out. 
Uh, he has ideas. Well, he's taking dumps in people's bathrooms to get back at them. Uh, he he feels hurt when you know this black woman turns him down for a white person, and you know he's he, there's a lot going on within him. He's kind of like telling the society, "You can't keep me down, and you can't you know do all these things to me. You know, take away the women from my culture from me. Take away." power and money from me, um, you know, put me at the bottom of the barrel. He's kind of like shaking his fist at them, but I mean, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to get better for him the, the way that he's approaching it. Uh, because if he wanted, you know, to have more finances, to make a better life for himself, um, to, to live in richer, richer neighborhoods, there's definitely ways that he could do that. I mean, nothing's holding him back. He's just, I mean, he's just judging things. He's not, there's no initiative to make life better for himself. Uh, Wayne, I mean, Wayne is just walking down a dark path. You can see that he's not going to give up chasing after women. He's not going to stop going into that conquest. Uh, and eventually, you can see from the pattern that his wife within the short story is probably going to um, leave him at some point or kick him, kick him out for good at some point. And Wayne's not a young guy. He's an older dude. Um, so you see, within this work, you see this judge, this narrator judging society, his society, where he lives, the people uh, that he lives around and how, you know, the differences between poor neighborhoods and richer neighborhoods and how you can even tell them apart by the things they can afford and buy. Um, so yeah, that's my summary, that's my analysis, that's my look on this work by Juno Diaz. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, and I'll see you guys in my next video.